Welcome to Poly 371. Uh, this is just a brief introduction to give you an idea of how this online class is going to be working. Um, first, I want to highlight that this class is called Comparative Asian Politics, and what we're going to do in this class is focus on Central Asia, post-Soviet Central Asia. So this is a case study, really, of independence and, and post-colonial states, and especially the challenges of democratization. And we'll use Central Asia, which is uh, defined here as post-Soviet Central Asia, including five countries, as sort of a um, as 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 sort of this case study to introduce you to uh, a part of Asia that you probably don't know much about, probably haven't heard much about, uh, an increasingly important part of Asia. Uh, so I have actually functioned in Central Asia. I've worked on Central Asian politics for many years. Um, I've spent more than a year on the ground, probably a year and a half or so in total. Um, going back and forth between working as a political economic officer at the U.S. Embassy in Tashkent, um, where I covered things uh, such as human rights and arms control, and then going back and working on human rights issues as a researcher. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to give you a general idea of how the class is structured and go through the sections um, and just let you know what you should expect from the class and what the class expects from you. Again, this class focuses on Central Asia. Um, this is the syllabus here, and the syllabus will probably be altered um, by the time you see it uh, because there are various um, versions of the syllabus that'll that'll sort of be um, dealt with. Uh, but right now, um, it stands more or less as it's going to be, just with some of the readings that might change. So the goal of the class is to introduce you to the politics and societies of Central Asia. But in the process, what I'm trying to do is give you a case study of independence and decolonization and also challenges to democratization uh, that play out really across the world. Uh, in, in this class, what we're going to do is we're going to trace Central Asia's development uh, really from around the 19th century up until the present. Um, most of what we work on is going to be 20th century um, politics because that gives you the base for what we have today. And using this base, you should be able to apply all the lessons learned to why we see um, various things happening in Central Asia. Um, and the, in the discussion section, I'll give you a variety of news articles. Also, on the test, which I'll get to in a couple minutes, I will give you news articles and ask you to explain them based on what you've learned. So we're going to talk about everything from ethnicity and nationalism and political development to economics uh, and foreign policy. Uh, what I want you to understand from this class, what I want you to learn from this class, is, is how to understand Central Asia in particular and where Central Asia fits into U.S. foreign policy but more broadly, I want you to have a better understanding of the challenges facing the developing world, and especially post-colonial states inside and outside the post-communist world. You're going to learn about a lot about communism and how the communist experience changed Central Asia. But remember that this communist experience, and something I come back to frequently in the lectures, is not, is not just a quote-unquote communist experience, it's a colonial experience. Um, so this is something that m most of Asia has gone through, much of Asia has gone through at one time or another. Now, in terms of how your grades are structured, you're going to have two written tests, which is each going to be about a third of your grade, and then online participation in various discussion um, questions. What's important to understand about the discussion questions, and I'll get to the tests in a couple minutes, is that I expect you to post at least 10 times over the period of this class. And there are a number of questions that deal with each of the themes that are presented in the class. Um, sometimes they're, they're open questions, sometimes the questions refer to specific newspaper articles and asking you to analyze. I want you to post at least five original posts and at least five responses to others. And note that when you post responses to others and your own responses, these should be detailed arguments um, about, uh, in, in relation to the question. Answer the question in a detailed way using the various skills and the various knowledge, uh, pieces of knowledge that you've gained from the lectures and from the readings. Um, to to analyze the question at hand. Uh, also, a, a sort of logistical, very important logistical point is that once you actually post, you need to take a screenshot for your records um, because these screenshots are what you're going to send to me at the end of the class so that I can give you your discussion grade. Uh, we don't need to worry about what well, we always worry about. Honesty, don't cheat. Um, but this is going to be, since it's an online class, it will be an open note format for your tests <clears throat> and for your discussion points as well. So don't cheat off each other, uh, but absolutely draw from your readings and draw from the lecture notes that you've taken. 
Um, before I get into what we're actually going to do in this class, well, no, let me, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do in the class, and then I'll get into the tests um, in more detail. So the, the weeks, the way it's written here is, is it says week one to two A, so I, I pretend that we've got two classes per week. Um, and of course, if this is a, a summer or special session format, it's going to be much more uh, much, much quicker. Um, but this is just a way for me to break it down. <clears throat> and you can see where the midterm falls in and what you need to have done by the time the midterm rolls around. So the I, I call them weeks here, week one and two A, which would be the Tuesday of the Tuesday, Thursday, for example. And then this refers to the online lectures. And when you see the online lectures, you'll see that they're labeled in days, days two to four, for example. Um, or days two and then days two to th and then days three to four. You'll see it all makes sense. Um, when you go to the online lectures, you want to make sure that you're covering the days that, that are, are listed. <clears throat> so we'll start off by looking at Central Asia's place in the world and uh, sort of an overview from imperial rule to Soviet rule. And then we'll talk in more detail about the Soviet experience. Um, after that, we're going to talk by week four, which is days eight to nine. We'll talk about what perestroika was, the restructuring uh, and ultimately the collapse of the Soviet Union and, and how it happened. <clears throat> Through this, we'll also discuss nationalism and independence, how Central Asia was really catapulted into independence. This will bring us to your first midterm, or your first test. Um, and then the second part of the class, we'll look at the democratization process, um, looking at sort of the sorts of, of institutions they had um, that they could have adapted in Central, adopted in Central Asia and what they did adopt. Um, and then we'll talk about Central Asian politics generally, um, how Central Asian leaders have managed to hold power pretty much from the communist period on. Um, we'll talk about the outlier, which I'll frequently refer to, which is Tajikistan, where you had a civil war in the in the mid-1990s, early to mid-1990s. Um, and then we'll get back into the rest of Central Asia, including Tajikistan. We'll talk about the economics and then the foreign policies of these countries. Uh, and finally, we'll, we'll close the thematic sections with a discussion about Islamism, um, the, the risk of, of Islamists um, radical Islamists taking power. Um, and and then after that, we will get into the state of Central Asia today, and I'll put a series of lectures up, and you probably won't have formal readings. Um, there will probably be newspaper articles that I will um, post for you to read, um, and we'll, we'll begin to put everything together. And then you'll finally have your final exam. Now, for each of... Oh, that's not where I want to go. Hold on. For each of the exams, this is a, a sort of a uh, general set of instructions for each of your exams. So the midterm and finals are each given equal weight. Each accounts for about a third of your grade, 33.3%. Uh, that 33.4% goes for your discussion. Uh, the tests are going to be given at a specific time and date, which I'll announce in advance, very much in advance, right around the beginning of the semester. Um, and at that time and date, the question will appear in Blackboard. Um, there will actually be three, possibly up to five questions, and you'll have to choose two of them. Um, you'll have a, a total of two hours. So, if, for example, I post the question at uh, 10 a.m., then by uh, 12 p.m., you need to have that emailed to me. And your answer should be typed into a Word format, into a Word document, um, which is saved as your last name, for example, Grodsky 371 Minterm or Grodsky 371 Final. You could do this right now just to save time. So you have those documents ready for you. Uh, the, again, the responses have to be sent to me by the time that they're due. Um, so keep an eye on the clock because I will uh, deduct points uh, for even things that are a minute late. You, they need to be in on time so everyone's on the, on the same page so it's fair for everyone. Um, also, be sure to maintain a copy of your sent email if, for example, something goes wrong and I say I never got it, then you have proof that you sent it. Shouldn't happen, but just in case. The way I'm going to grade these is along three dimensions, clarity, originality, and thoroughness. By clarity, I, I mean um, a very clear statement in your first paragraph highlighting your main argument and describing the evidence you're going to pull from. In other words, uh, the point here, use a sentence or two to answer the question and then add a few more sentences to explain how you're going to back this up throughout the rest of your paper and then follow through and, and, and discuss um, using that sort of framework. Um, I'm not going to deduct, deduct points for grammar and misspellings, but you have to know how to spell country names and leader names as well. So I will deduct for those. Uh, originality refers to how you structure your argument. And what I really want you to do is I want you to think broadly about how any particular question can relate back to 
other themes that we've dealt with. So, for example, if I ask you a question about uh, the political economy, I want you to go back and talk about, uh, think about how it, how maybe ethnicity, and I don't know, this is off the top of my head, how maybe ethnicity relates to the political economy today, um, to the degree that it might. And and I want you to draw from your readings and what they said and how this how this all makes sense, um, and also from your lectures. Um, <clears throat> It's important for me to emphasize. I want. I don't want you to pick out like a a couple little strands from each lecture or each set of readings. I want you to have a comprehensive argument. But the more original argument will will incorporate elements from outside of the most obvious section. So, for example, if it's a foreign policy question, then try to uh, look outside of just that foreign policy and and think about how independence relates to foreign policy or how Islamic extremism or something else. So finally, you're going to be graded on thoroughness, and I want to see that you've used the texts and the lectures sufficiently to create a well-structured, comprehensive answer. Um, and note that because these are open note, you, I want you to cite the readings, just a parenthetical citing with the author's name. I don't need the date. I don't need uh, the bibliography. I, I, I already have your bibliography. Um, in fact, I'll write right here, no bibliography necessary, um, because we're all reading the same stuff. So that takes care of the tests. Um, I will post sort of a, a classic great discussion um, answer uh, just for you to have that, uh, for you to be aware of what that is. Um, and I think that's the gist for the course. So once you look at this, the next thing that you should start doing is looking at the readings, which are in your court, should be in your course documents on Blackboard. And you'll have all the readings by, I'll either put them in by week or by day. And then uh, there will also be the links uh, to your various lectures. And so that is that. Um, an important note here is that if you have any questions during this course, um, I want you to post them on uh, the discussion board, unless they're of a very personal nature. Right? Um, but if they're general questions about uh, concepts or about the format of the class or something like that, I want you to post them. I will have a general questions um, discussion post, or discussion thread, and I want you to post there so that everybody has um, the possibility of seeing something that might not be clear and, and me clarifying that. So uh, that's it, and good luck.